So I'm going to give you a little education here about plants, which you might not know. So we got a corn plant, OK? So the corn plant takes in CO2. It takes in water from the soil. And it makes sugar and starch and cellulose. The, the plant is largely made of cellulose. Now we, of course, are using the grain to make alcohol fuel currently. We're not using the rest of the corn plant yet, but I'll get there. I'll talk about that. So for every one pound of corn, we get 2.5 pounds of stock. So corn is really inefficient as a crop in general. For instance, wheat, if you grow one pound of wheat, it's only one pound of stock. So the plant is very efficient at making food compared to just plant structure. Corn is very inefficient. It also takes a lot out of the soil. And it takes a lot out of the soil. Because it's a grass, it's a high nitrogen feeder. Now, let's talk right now about the carbon dioxide part of this. And then we'll go off into the other things about agriculture and alcohol. So when, alcohol, when these plants go to make alcohol, we're only taking it from the corn. And that part, just the corn part, is neutral carbon. The amount of alcohol that, that is, um, the carbon dioxide from that alcohol and from fermentation is the same amount as used to produce that corn next year. But when the plant is growing, it also makes two and a half pounds of basically cellulose. So by, grow, if by growing crops to produce alcohol, the plant uses a lot more CO2 than is in the product that we make the alcohol from. So we're impounding a bunch of CO2 in the stocks. Now, you know, that's, and I've, I've talked with people at the USDA about that, and they can under, they, they're able to understand this far. But they're not used to thinking in terms of whole systems. And in permaculture, we do. So let's look at what's invisible. We've got all this down here. And what you may not know about most plants, including trees, is that for every pound of biomass above the ground, there's a pound below the ground. So when you see a tree out there, you're seeing half the tree. There's an enormous amount of, of life going on under the ground. In the case of grasses, it's actually more than half, but we'll just stick with half for now. So to make this one pound of corn, and, which is made into alcohol, we also get another, say, two and a half pounds of root matter, which is all basically made from carbon dioxide and water. It's carbohydrates. It's cellulose, primarily. Now, as an ecologist, I have to say that's not the end of the story. Because what most people think in terms of plants is that it's this one-way street. Nutrients go into the plant. And they go on up into the stalk and they become part of the food. And we've been you know, taught that this is basically the, the role of plants in the world is to feed us and eat other animal, feed other animals, and that the nutrient flow is all one way right up into the plant. You know, roots suck up nutrients, make the plant. But what most people need to understand about plants is that it's more complex than that. What's going on down here in the soil is a whole world in itself. And you know, I spend about four hours talking about the soil and permaculture class, so I'm going to give you just a little snapshot here. If you've got a root here like this, this is microscopic now, OK? And you've got these little cell walls here. So this is the very tip of a microscopic root here. Roots basically function as sponges. So it's like, for instance, let's say you have a spill on the counter. And you take a sponge, and you push it down in the, the liquid on the counter, and you let go. You'll see what happens. The fluid that's closest to the sponge sucks into the sponge. And then as you get farther and farther away from the sponge, there's less and less effect. So that's basically you know, the absorption from roots is very limited to what's right around the root. And that's the liquid with you know, nutrients that the corn needs. If that was the only way that the corn plant could bring in nutrients, it wouldn't get any taller than about this. And trees don't get any taller than about 8 to 10 feet before they fall over and die. Something else brings the nutrients to the tree or the corn, and those are mycorrhizal fungi. So these little fungi are much, much smaller, much smaller than a little thread off through the soil. And as it comes up to the, the root here, it either punches right in here or it might punch right in there, and it will either grow into the space between the cells where there's fluid, 
or it grows right into the cell like this. So this fungus grows in there and it takes fluid from, from the plant. What's in the fluid? Carbohydrates, sugar. So what you're finding is that it's not one way. The sugar is produced up here. It is pumped down into the roots, out into these funguses. It also gets exuded all around out in here where it feeds bacteria and the bacteria reproduce and they break down other things in the soil making them soluble, which then the plant can absorb. But most of it goes to these funguses. These funguses are called mycorrhizal fungi. Myco means fungus, rhizo means root. And these are not plants. Funguses are not plants. What can plants do? Photosynthesize. They can photosynthesize. They can make food from sunlight, right? Funguses don't do that. They digest things. They break them down. So what these funguses are doing is they're, they're trading the sugar that the plant can just throw away, give away, it makes so much of, and get valuable nutrients that the fungus says, ah, I can just dissolve this stuff and give it to the plant. You know, both of them are saying, ha, we're getting away with something here, you know. So this is, you know, symbiosis, of course, both things giving each other what they need. It turns out that plants take 60% of their carbon and pump it out into the roots and out into the funguses. So now we're looking at just rough numbers, another five pounds of CO2 is pumped out into the underground system where it goes into the funguses, et cetera. So for every pound of corn that we're turning into fuel, we're really impounding about 10 pounds of carbon dioxide. And this is not the best crop for doing this. Corn is, you know, kind of a very wimpy crop when it comes to this whole ecological system of food production. So, so the simple answer is, yeah, it's carbon neutral when you only look at the grain, but when you look at the whole system, basically growing crops to produce, um, to produce our fuel, suck tremendous amounts of CO2 out of the air and put it down in the ground you know, um, for microorganisms to eat. Because all this rots you know, when you turn it into the soil, et cetera. Now eventually, you know, those organisms will breed some of that back as carbon dioxide, but it's a huge amount of reduction from the air. Trees are bigger, so they, bring, they, they handle quite a bit more carbon dioxide, yeah. And there's a lot of trees, especially in the tropics. Remember I mentioned sago palms, for instance? There are trees we can use for producing alcohol as well. They just pump out the sugar, you know, that are just great. But we're also going to talk about cellulose in a while, and that's where trees really can make a big difference. Um, just to give you another, I'll give you an example about when you get away from grain, when you go to the sugar crops. So let's say we're going to look at a sugar beet, okay? So you see all these great greens above the ground, but of course most of the beet is below the ground, right? Now sugar beets, you may, most of you have never seen one. A sugar beet can be 15 pounds and fodder beets even bigger. So the beet that's underground here, you would think, wow, there's 15 pounds of basically sugar and a very small amount of weight is in the leaves. So this plant is much better at taking sunlight, carbon dioxide and water and making sugar compared to, to a corn crop which uses a lot of energy to take the sugar and build it up into starch. It's less efficient for making sugar. But what most people don't realize about beets is that the taproot of the beet goes down five feet and that the root profile looks like this underground. These are all side roots going out. And of course, we harvest this main big root in the middle, but all of this is part of the biomass of the beet plant. So compared to corn, maybe double or triple the amount of carbon gets, gets uh, put into the soil, into the mic soil micro life, and of course, is taken out of the air. So when we start growing stuff to make alcohol, we're doing significant reduction of CO2. Is there a reason why um, corn is used instead of beets to make 